What's the importance of finding a real richness in the Roman Catholic Church? Well, there are many people that have left the church. How can we be able to invite them to come home, to come back to the beauty of what it means to be a Catholic? Stay tuned. <laughs> My name is Father Mike Manning. God bless you. Thank you very much for tuning in. We have got a program that I think you are going to be very excited about, something that's going to enrich your life in a great way. I, I invite you to stay tuned and be blessed. We're trying in this program to bring you to an understanding of how important Jesus is in the world, how Jesus is important in your life. But as you know, I'm a Roman Catholic priest, and uh, I come from a from a from perhaps a background that would be different than yours, different from yours, but at the same time it's filled with rich experiences of what it means to love Jesus, to, to be able to attain the power of what it means to have salvation in Jesus Christ. I'm excited about my experience as being a Catholic. But there's, there's a struggle that's going on here in the United States and in around the world of this richness and this beauty of the church that I experience, many people are leaving. Many people are going to other denominations. Other people are just kind of giving up on God and giving up on religion. But there's a, there's a, a cavalier, if you will. There's a, there's a person who's needing to stand in the, in the breach to be willing to speak out and try to see what we can do to make sure the beauty of what it means to be a Catholic, loving Jesus as a Catholic, can be rich and beautiful. Tom, God bless you. Thank bless you very you, much Father. for being with us. Oh, it's great to be with you. Your, your, your whole life is dedicated at this point to really seeing what you can do to invite Catholics to come, as you say it, to come home. To come home. And not just Catholics, there's so many people searching for answers, looking for Jesus, and the world is so distracting and so busy, they're not finding him. We need to invite others. We need to be that source of light to tell others about the richness we have in our relationship with Jesus. The problem is that there's so many messages going on right now. I mean, there's, there's, there's the sensuality, there's the power, there's the money, there's all this stuff is coming and it, it's trying to distract us. And you're kind of in the midst, midst of this trying to raise your hand and say, wait, there's something else. There's something which is even more profound than, than all of that which can bring the peace that we're looking for in our life, the fullness exactly. of what? You know, the, the, the common enemy we fight, your viewers, us as Roman Catholics, the body of Christ in general, is secularism. Yeah. It's rampant now. 41% yeah. of Vancouver, Canada, they don't believe in faith. They're a atheist and agnostic. We did a 41 campaign there. 41%. That's a lot of people. It's skyrocketing around the United States and the world. The other thing is, I hear this this word, uh, I, I, I'm attracted by it, the nuns, N-O-N-E-S. Nuns, yes, yeah. yeah they, 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 when you, you're Catholic, Protestant, you're yeah, nothing, Jewish. They have no faith. No faith and, at all. And in fact, God sat me, and I pray for this, I pray to lead everyone, uh, every, lead someone closer to Christ every day. And I encourage the viewers to do the same thing. Pray that God will use you to lead someone closer to Him and His Son every day. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with Christ. Uh, have, you, have you been a Catholic, a follower of Jesus all your life? Uh, I have been, Father, but uh, like so many young people, we get distracted with college, with ambition. I'm going to be a successful business person. And my relationship with Jesus became more temporary or part-time. Now, some viewers will say, how can that be? Exactly, it can't be. He has to be the center and source and summit of our life, or else we're missing the boat. But you but, hadn't gone through times when perhaps he wasn't the pivotal oh no, or the oh center no. of your no, life? No, my business career was the center of my life. And, and I got caught up in that trap that so many For how us, long? For how long? Well, it? for a number of years years after college. It was when I was 35 that I had my reversion experience, where I had kind of a born-again Catholicism experience in front of the Eucharist on a men's retreat, and the Holy Spirit came over me. God wrapped His loving arms around me, and I felt this infused wisdom in my soul that said, Tom, I'm inviting you to downsize and simplify. You're leading your life in the gray area, and you need to choose. Is it me, or is it the world? 
And with that amount of love and mercy that God showed me, how do you not choose him? It was that abundant. I said yes, and my life has never been the same since. And so you've, uh, what, tell me a little bit about what happened. What? Well, I started, I started praying. I, d during that experience on the retreat in front of the Eucharist, we as Catholics believe Jesus is What's truly... The Eucharist? Tell the me Eucharist. What... We believe that Jesus is truly present in the, in the sacramental host, the bread and the wine. And this is what we celebrate at Mass when we have exactly. the bread and the wine and, and exactly. repeating Christ's words, this is my body, this yes. is my blood. And, and, uh, and it, it, it becomes that. And the Bible clearly says it. Truly, truly, unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you will not have life within you. And we have taken that oh. at face value ever since Jesus said it himself okay. at the Last Supper. So you were in the presence so of the Lord. So I was in the presence, the presence of, the Lord, of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit came over me, and I saw... Uh, his love, and I felt his love, and saw that I was not leading my life uh, according to his principles. And so uh, I said yes. The light switch went on like a Saul Paul conversion in my own little way. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do in my life? And uh, I realized that he had given me, and he gives each of us, unique talents and interests and gifts to serve him and to serve the world. So how delighted I was, Father, when I realized that God had called me to use the talents and interests in advertising to serve the church and to serve Him. Our family is made up of every race. We are young and old, rich and poor, men and women, sinners and saints. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor we are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing relief and comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other scholarly or religious institution. We developed the scientific method and laws of evidence. We founded the college system. We defend the dignity of all human life and uphold marriage and family. Cities were named after our revered saints who navigated a sacred path before us. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible we are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have consistently guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church. With over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith, for centuries we have prayed for you and our world, every hour of every day, whenever we celebrate the Mass. You know, the, the evil one tries to tell us and young people, when you say yes to God, when you fully embrace Jesus as your personal Savior, your life's going to be mundane and boring, and it's going to have a lot of rules. It's just the opposite. We know, you in your vocation, and I in mine, that when we embrace Christ, our world becomes full. It, it's the fulfillment of everything we're looking for in life, and then we aim toward heaven, the ultimate goal. And so I began this adventure uh, with, with uh, a newfound faith at age 35, where I was going to use the talents and interest in advertising to create and air powerful, inspiring commercials to invite people back to church. Millions, hundreds of millions have seen it, and over a half a million have come back to the church, praise God. <laughs> let's, let's, I, I've got some questions, and we talked about this before the program. Um, how many, how many Catholics are there in the United States? Uh, um, kind of in general, it's, it's, it's about it's 70, 67 million, about 70 million almost. About 70 million About one people? out of four is about a baptized one, Catholic. Is about ba and about Catholic. one third of those actually go to Mass regularly. So about 6% of the United States are active practicing Catholics when you, when you sort out all the Mass. Not that I want to be overly negative, but why are people leaving the Catholic Church? You know, uh, some will quote scandals or the other things, and for some that is true. It's, it's wounded true. them deeply, personally, or the they've known of somebody. Cases, the bishops, uh, it's, the priests. It's horrific. And, when and somebody it's... in a position of authority, yes. be it a, a soldier, a police officer, a school teacher, a doctor, or a priest, or a minister, uh, um, uh, abuses that privilege and uh, and and you know defies our uh, ability to understand why they violated our trust. It really breaks our heart. So, uh, but it, not, let me get that. Yeah, right. so, so what should I do? Should I just become overwhelmed and leave the church? No, absolutely not, because what Jesus taught us and what the church gives us is still sound. It's, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, but humans sin. We all sin and we yeah. fail, and that's why we need a Savior. And so what we need to do are, number one, pray for anybody who violates the trust of God and, and is not leading the Christian life, and we need others to pray for us to stay on that right track. And not only pray, but we also need to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Oh, absolutely. But, but you know, 
the, the surprising thing in, once we started getting into this new evangelization and talking to people, the vast majority, about 90%, don't leave the Catholic Church, and I'll say other, other faith communities, uh, for the reasons you think. Most of them are leaving because they've been distracted by the world. They sleep in on Sunday. They got out of the habit of going to Mass. They went on vacation and missed church. Uh, we Catholics believe you need to go to Mass every Sunday. That the Ten Commandments, when Jesus says, keep holy, you know, they, the mm -hmm. Lord said, uh, God said, challenge. keep holy the Sabbath, that, that He meant it. And so we believe that it's a grave sin to miss Mass on Sunday. But when you start getting out of the, the practice of going to, to Mass every week, uh, it becomes less and less of a priority in your life and people drift. So the vast majority of people have told us they don't hate the church, they don't hate the teachings of the church, they just got out of the habit and it's been nine years or more since they've been to Mass. Big things happening. Yeah, it's a slow fade, Father. There was an awful lot of concern with, I know of some of the older people, that the Second Vatican Council brought an awful lot of changes, especially with regard to the liturgy. We moved from what I was raised with a Latin Mass, with everything yes. very, very ritualistic and very, very clear, probably mm -hmm. not understanding everything, to all of a sudden being in English and being alive and, and being with guitar music and new yes. things. And a lot of times people use that as an excuse mm -hmm. to say, ah, that's not my church. I, I don't want to be in that anymore. And I can understand that that, uh, that that is a problem for some who are used to that tradition and they've grown up in that. And, and that's why I love uh, the Catholic faith. We have a very broad umbrella. If you want uh, very invigorating, upbeat music, a lot of the teen-oriented masses sure. uh, have that. If you want more of the, the Latin mass, you can find Latin masses to that, the state that's that are sanctioned, that, sanctioned by bishops. That's the important yes, thing. Yes, yes. That you don't have to go to, no. to this or that. And, and, and If you don't like folk music, you can find a mass that... And and that's the beauty of this universal church, Catholicism, Catholic means universal, that we've got all kinds of great ways to worship, all keeping in fact the, the liturgy sure, is the same sure, worldwide, sure. but there's different ways to express that through music, homilies, and so forth, and we have just a rich, beautiful faith. Praise God for our Amen. church. Listen, we're going to come back. I, 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 we're going to go to a commercial, but I want to talk a little bit more about that, but I also want to get into what can we do to make sure that people feel welcome to come back to the church? There's plenty we can do. Amen. Stay tuned. We've got some real exciting things to share with you. We're sharing some exciting experiences about uh, why are people leaving the Catholic Church? And then the other aspect is what can we do to make sure that they're going to be invited and welcome back? Yes. But before we leave that, that why thing, there are a couple serious things that I hear. Um, people saying that, well, the Bible really isn't significant in the Catholic Church, and I want to go to a church where I'm going to be able to have the Bible really central to my faith in God. How do you respond to that? Oh, we Catholics love and embrace the Bible after all. Uh, history shows the Catholic Church brought the Bible to the world. That's true. Around 390. The Council of Bishops and Cardinals prayed and they said, Lord, we have these scriptures. We got the Old Testament, the Septuagint, but we have all these new scriptures. Which ones do you yeah. want to be in this book that eventually became called the Bible, Biblios, uh, and prayed over it? And the Holy Spirit uh, led them to pick the certain thing and that, that was it. So the Catholics compiled the Bible and we talk about that in our epic commercial. So historically, the Bible was brought to the world in human terms of God's divine word by the Catholics. And one of the important things too is that when we celebrate what we call our Mass, yes. which is our Sunday experience, there are two main divisions in that. The one, the one real heart that starts in the beginning yeah. liturgy is of the, the word. kind of the liturgy of the Word yeah. where we, we listen to the Bible and we listen and then, then we have a teaching yes. on, the, on the readings. And, usually and four, four different ones, Father, as you know, yeah, Old yeah. Testament, New Testament, Psalms, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I mean, we, we get it. We get it all. Four and then we move from that. We then we move into the experience of what you Lit spoke liturgy of, the, of the, the Eucharist, Eucharist and yes. we share the renewing what Christ said: "Do in memory of me. This Absolutely. is my body. This is my blood." Yeah, and that's, that's the beauty and richness of a Catholic Mass. If if some of the viewers haven't been or haven't been recently, I'd like to encourage them to go to a Catholic Mass. You'd be surprised at how many things that you think you know about Catholicism. And you'd be surprised to say, wow, they do talk about the Bible. In fact, they teach the Bible in the uh, homily or sermon. And four times, four different readings we talk about that are, that are part of the liturgical uh, calendar mm -hmm. where we, they all tie together and yeah. give us a rich teaching. And uh, boy, you feel just fed after not only having the Word, 
but having the sacraments, uh, Jesus in, in the, the body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist given to us, fed yeah, to us, yeah, yeah. Uh, to keep us going and sustaining us. It's beautiful and rich. Uh, the Mass is awesome. One of the things that I find very simply about, about Pope, Pope Francis mm -hmm. is that in the midst of controversy, we can, we can read the Bible and sometimes yes. we can come up with all kinds of understandings of what it says and where it is. Interpretations and so forth. There's this cry, and I think this is why Jesus gave this power to Peter and asked mm -hmm. that it be passed on, to make sure that we have confidence that there can be a clarity that speaks to us of what the Holy Spirit calls us to do and, yes. and clarifies when, dis when problems arise, ah, this is the truth. You know, is, is, is the Bible what it is? Yes. Um, is the Eucharist what it, what it is? Is Jesus the Son of God? You know, is, is the Holy Spirit yes. God also? Questions that were rising in the early church, but we needed a clarification in order to be able to have confidence of moving ahead. Are you with me on that? Oh, I'm with you on that totally fine. Because when you think about it, if people only, now the Bible is the inherent, inherent word, of, word of God. We all agree on that. Of course. But if you only go to the Bible, you're not going to find the word Bible in the Bible. You're not going to find the word Trinity in the Bible. Yeah. So where do we get this theological teaching? Yeah. We get it from the church, the body of Christ, helps uh, through definitely. tradition with a capital T, that we've always known these things. This is what Christ gave us. This is what the apostles did. This is what the early day church did in the first and second century because Jesus said, this is the way to do it. And so, so we always carry on that. Uh, as part of our worship, uh, with the Bible as a central focus, and the sacraments, because those, the sacraments, uh, Eucharist, uh, confession, uh, confessing to a priest, it's not only scriptural, but it's always been part of our mm -hmm. church heritage. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what the Catholic Church has, the whole umbrella that doesn't change. We don't waver with popular uh, voting, we don't uh, change things. If, if something was wrong in Jesus' time, and he said it was wrong, it's wrong today. If something was right, it's right. God doesn't change, he's eternal. Amen. And the Catholic Church protects that. And we've become, in a sense, a moral compass to the world. And that is, I think, why we're the target of so many people who criticize to say, how dare you talk about abortion being wrong? Abortion is wrong. It's the taking of an innocent Amen. human life. Amen. How dare you fight against uh, you know, gay marriage? And we say traditional marriage has always been uh, you know, the law of land, God's law, and we're going to protect that. Now, even, we will, even the death penalty. Even the death penalty. We believe in the sanctity, of, the, the of, sanctity human life of human life across yeah. the board. And so we take it on the chin for protecting the teachings that Jesus Christ himself gave us. Amen. But you know what? That's the cross we need to bear because it's the truth. Now, you've written a book here. This is really great. <laughs> Random House, the same, the same people that I wrote. Yes. Right. Catholics come home. Could you give me some little, mm -hmm. we only got a few moments sure. left. Could you give me a little bit of an understanding of what can we do? What can we as Catholics yes. do to make sure that we're welcoming more people to come back home? To come and back I'll say to for the, the evangelical and Protestant viewers too, it's called God's Extraordinary Plan for Your Life as a subtitle. And that's the message we need to tell the world, that God does have an extraordinary plan for each of our lives. If we know, live, and do His will, we'll change the world. He wants us to be part of this salvific mission uh, He has to spread the good news to the ends of the earth. Uh, there's a phrase I use when I speak around the world, and that's, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. So many people are fighting the battle of witnessing the hope of Christ with arguments and with history and with theology and deep concepts when people who don't know the Lord are looking for love. They're looking for us to be the light bearers, to be that Christ-like presence in their life, to show them love, to listen to them, to give them hope. Mm. That's what Christ did. When he met the sinner, uh, the woman at the well caught in adultery, any, any one of the biblical figures we read, the number one thing he offered mercy, compassion, and love. Mm. And, and that's what Pope Francis is bringing to Isn't the world. Isn't that exciting? Everybody's excited. I've had so many friends who are evangelical, Protestant, Catholics, former Catholics say, wow, I love him. And why do they love him? He's authentic. He's Christ-like. He walks the walk with a, a humility that we, we, we embrace and love, and he's teaching us to do the same. A change doesn't happen necessarily because of what I say or what I do. It's God's grace that's going to be able to change. It's and God's it love is. and, we and can't God's take credit. invitation. It's all God's but grace. we can be beautiful instruments if we offer that, that honesty, that truth, and the peace that we experience in our own lives yes. as a beacon of hope to people who don't have that peace. Is, am I, am I, you are am I exactly picking up what you're you, saying? You've got it exactly on the no, money, Father. Absolutely. That this is where we come. And I think... When I was pastor, I, I, I 
I thought of a couple things that was really important as being a pastor in a church that we're welcoming. Yes. Number one, we're welcoming. You know, that people can know that they can come and that they're go not going to be strangers. Right. They're going to be considered part of a family. Number two, they're going to be listened to. Yes. <laughs> I think we all want to be listened to. <laughs> we want people to hear what's going on in our hearts and in our souls. To know our struggles, our pains, Precisely. our Precisely. But to be honest and listen mm -hmm. to that. And then the, the third thing was empowerment. Mm -hmm. To allow people to be able to use the gifts, if they're men, if they're women, to allow their gifts to be able to come forth and to become that, that beacon of light, that light to the world that, that Jesus talks about in yes. Matthew 5, that can really bring about the peace. Father, there's always room for improvement to be more welcoming. But when you really boil it down, if people say, why should I take a look at the Catholic Church? I've been in 12 denominations. Why should I consider Catholicism? Or why should I consider coming back? Here's the bottom line, that Jesus created a church. He uh, said he will never uh, abandon it, that he will guide us with the Holy Spirit till the end of time. He will feed us with his body and blood in the Eucharist. He'll forgive us in the sacrament of reconciliation. And no matter how much us human beings try to muck it up or we sin or we fail yeah. and how unwelcoming we can be at times, there's nothing that will ever replace the, the church that Jesus himself has given us uh, that, that, uh, uh, that feeds us and embraces us and sends us on our way to heaven. And that's a beautiful thing. Amen. We're going to come back. We're gonna, we have another commercial. We're going to come back, and I'd, I'd, li I'd like for us to pray over some of the people who have been writing in and calling awesome. in to ask for their intentions. And we'll pray also for pray maybe the stirring of what's happening in their hearts from what you've said that may be a call back to, to a finding the peace of what the church can offer. Please stay tuned. Tom, I thank you very much for uh, being with us and sharing the excitement of your love of Christ, your love of the church, and that, that community that we have that enables us to come close to Christ. Um, we got a wonderful thing going on with this ministry. Mm -hmm. There are people at home that are, are reaching, picking up their telephone. There are people that are also going to their computers and, and getting in touch with us and letting us know of some of their prayer needs. And, wonderful. Uh, we're, um, we're as a ministry right here at WordNet in, in, in Southern California, we pray. But I'm asking you also, if you would become part of this family, if you will, joining with us, asking God to move in a mighty way to touch people's lives. We, we've got some, let me mention just a couple sure. of these. There's um, Bob Zur, he's the executive director of an organization called uh, the Lay Mission Helpers. He's going through some bypass surgery here in Southern California. I've got Rose from Pennsylvania. She's looking for reconciliation with her boyfriend. Oh. And we're gonna, we're gonna be praying for that. Gloria from Arizona, um, she needs a health situation. She's having a problem with her face being swollen up. Wow. And she's praying for that. Um, Cheryl, um, uh, her son um, has, um, has a real struggle physically, and her daughter, um, her daughter uh, Robin, asking that maybe their marriage after 25 years can be blessed. Mm -hmm. you know, they're struggling with, with a divorce. Wow. Eleanor in Michigan, a uh, health problem and, and tests that are, that are coming up um, in, in a soon time. Let, let's pray with these people, and, and let's pray also for the whole intention of what we were doing with this program, of, of hoping people can be able, if they've been estranged from Christ, if they've been estranged from God, yes. if they've been estranged from the church, that they might take the risk of saying, let me risk, let me risk coming back and seeing what, what's there. Experiencing a church that's welcoming, a church that's listening, and a church that's empowering. You know? let, let, let's lay hands, if you would, right here on this. Lord, we come before you with confidence that you love us. And we believe that you're not just a God who's up in, the, in a cloud or far away, but you love us and you live with us and you walk with us, not just 2,000 years ago, but at this very moment, living in our hearts with the Holy Spirit. All of our friends have been asking for help. They've been struggling with physical problems, with emotional problems, even those people that are struggling with separation from the church, separation from faith. 
Come, Lord, come into their lives. Bring healing, bring peace, bring the joy, bring the fullness that only you can give. And may Jesus' love for you always make you smile.